trailer out. 328-pound Alfonso Boone becomes the run stopper. Brian Erlacher, three years, three Pro Bowls at middle linebacker, and R.W. McQuarters and the Bears secondary will have their hands full with running the Bears all year. They have got to fix it. Michael Haynes, the number one draft pick, was the man who had him in the backfield, and a good hit there as Crockett met rudely by Alfonso Boone, getting his first start of the season with the entry to Keith Trailer. Explosive strength is what Dick Jaron tells you that Alfonso Boone has. Boy, he got right in a good, sure tackle on Crockett. Meanwhile, Brian Erlacher really straightened up by the block of Frank Middleton. The Raiders off it. Yeah, however, badly misses the extra point after 147 made in a row. Never have been missed. And here's Jerry Azuma. His first return of the season, and he gets it out to the 29-yard line. The ex-Wildcat with a nice return. Conversation in the second half when you miss one early. We'll see today. Stewart to Thomas up the middle. Good hole. Still on his feet. Big man from Michigan. The A-train is back on track. Cordell Stewart uh, had little time uh, to throw against the uh, Green Bay Packers, and the numbers and rating reflect it. Chris Valerio has started at right guard for the Bears for seven straight years, and Anthony Thomas has rushed for over 2,000 yards in two years plus this season, and that was a good rumble out to the 46 of 15 yards. And Thomas again. Good running by Anthony Thomas, but it's even better blocking by the Chicago offensive line. It's a massive hole for, for Anthony Thomas. Take a look at the blocking in the middle. Every Raider picked up. Gandy, Edwards, Krutz, Valerio, nice job up front. Gibson sealed it off. And keep in mind that Monday night, Anthony Thomas didn't touch the football until the Bears' fifth offensive possession in the second quarter. Dick Turan wasn't going to let that happen, obviously. Give it to him again. Behind the block of Dez White, his wide receiver. He has another first down. 15 yards, 18 yards, and now another 16. Three consecutive carries. And I dare say, maybe for the first time in the new Soldier Field, the crowd came to their feet. Look at the hole on the left side between Gandy and Edwards. And again, you know, there everybody focuses on how poorly the Bears play the run. The Raiders are 30th in the league, giving up almost 155 yards a game. And you can see the productivity of Thomas really increasing as the season's growing into uh, shape. Has some tough decisions to make. A loss of a yard on the play. They call it second and ten. <laughs> is out of bounds inside the five. Well, this most certainly will come back holding against Chicago. Punning 51.1 average. His net is 41-1. That's better than the total kicking of the Bears. A late pickup by McQuarters and he breaks into the clear. He's at the 40, the 50, only the punter to beat. Travian Smith and the punter Leckler make the tackle chance to cheer as the Bears are inside the Raider 30. You know what happens, Dick? The coverage team sees the ball rolling around on the field, and they think that it's going to end up being a dead ball, that nobody's going to pick it up. So you have a natural tendency right about now, oh, let's kind of just slow her down a little bit. You know, it's not going to be that big a deal. And then, woof, McQuarters picks it up and surprises everybody by bursting through that first line of coverage. R.W. McQuarters, 54 yards on the return of a 51-yard punt. That was just, that, that was well done by McQuarters. He was uh, critical of the fans Monday night for their excessive booing, and so he took some added heat as, as well. The 
this week. Thomas working his way into a hold of the 25 yard line. Well, it was no surprise that the A train was going to get into this game early, having been a late entry last week. A busy first quarter. He's the recipient of some fine blocking by the Chicago offensive line. Getting into the Raiders secondary a lot of times untouched. And but again, it does so many different things, Dick. It, it helps Cordell in the passing game, and it's keeping that 32nd ranked defense on the bench. Second down and eight. Passing down, Stewart on play action, going to run it. And he has a, what appears to be a first down as he's tripped up in the secondary by John Perella chasing the play. Cordell Stewart brings so much to the table as as a quarterback. Uh, he's been targeted here a little bit in Chicago, but in reality, he's had very little help offensively. Uh, they've, he's been blitzed mercilessly, and let's face it, all those years in Pittsburgh, he did have a very solid ground game to help Maynard to hold. A 35-yard attempt. Edinger has been perfect this year, five for five. He turns his back to business before he kicks. Very back turned. And then the quick whip that uses that to get momentum and nails it down the middle. 11.05 left in the half. And that, and that shallow angle cost him the chance to make a tackle. Just over three minutes left in the half, and the Raiders deep in Bears territory again from the 15. Gannon complete to Jolly, and Erlacher wrestles him down. Maybe a yard gain on the play. Well, for a minute there, it looked like Erlacher was going to go right over the top of Doug Jolly, didn't it? Young man from University of New Mexico, three years in the league, three Pro Bowls. He runs sideline to sideline. That's what all the coaches, they rave about his ability to cover the width of the field. Well, of whether or not it was a fumble by Desmond Clark. Anthony Thomas behind Cordell Stewart. The quick out to Des White. And he has the catch for about five yards. Terran Shaw makes the tackle. In a passing situation as a quarterback, you've got to skedaddle out of it. Well, they didn't uh, stop the clock on that out-of-bounds catch. And White gets another. And he got to the 36-yard line. The Bears have two timeouts to use. White is the only receiver with an average over nine yards a catch. More penalty yards and pass yards for the Bears as Stewart takes off. And slides at the 42, but the clock will run, and we're under a minute. Rod Woodson, the veteran safety, and Cordell says, I'll use one of those two time breakers. We can grab people and hold on to them. But Aaron Gibson that time just... Again, put the old horse collar on him, and down he goes, and no yellow flag. Stewart throws a slant, complete to Booker, and Marty Booker is at the 30, the 20, the 10, and he's written out by Travian Smith. They say he stepped out of bounds at the 10. A big pass play for the Stewart Bears. Pass. Take a look at this, the dreaded crossing pattern, man coverage. And when you have man coverage by Philip Buchanan and then a missed tackle by your safety, that results in a big play. And Cordell, hey, he's just happy the passing game moves into positive numbers. And that was a seven-point tackle. Third down. That's what Dick Geron was talking about. We can't get our defense off the field. Janikowski has it teed up, and Jerry Azuma waits at the other end and comes up to field it on the run at the 14. And he continues to run all the way out near midfield. Uh, steps out of bounds at around the 45-yard line. Eric Johnson bumped him out. Let's go down to Bonnie. <laughs> Thomas on second and eight. Able to wiggle through a hole. And Tyler Brayton, the rookie defensive end, makes the tackle at the Raider 47. It'll be a couple of yards short of a first down. And this first possession to lead to some points. 18-3. Thomas, he's got the first down as he barrels to the 45-yard line. Tackled by Barton and Dorsett. 
And this is exactly what the Bears have to do. No brain surgery here. Keep giving the ball to Anthony Thomas. Follows a good lead block, good surge there by the right side of his offensive line. A running game is the only thing that's going to save the Chicago offense. He left Michigan with a rushing record of 4,400 yards and 55 touchdowns. And a buck 10 time, too. More wrestling than football. First and 20, Stewart chased out of the pocket and trying to get to the sidelines and tackled at the 50-yard line by Napoleon Harris. Spot where Janikowski tried the field goal, the 37 was the line of scrimmage for the spot of the kick. And Anthony Thomas uh, burrows for a couple, and we remind you that to be determined. That's called a surprise. Second down, Thomas. And he's wrapped up at the 43-yard line, about four yards shy of the first down. Uh, John Perella makes another good defensive play. Abdullah in the backfield on third and four. And a throw underneath is complete to the tight end. To show he hung on, Desmond Clark lofts it high. He is the leading receiver for the Bears on the year with the 12 catches coming in. They have a tough road to hoe here anyway, and they're making it a whole lot of road. Stewart on the draw, and Thomas gets outside to the 40, and a good open field tackle by the veteran Rod Woodson. Woodson playing with injuries, can't even practice. Raiders at the 20. Gannon looking down the middle, deflected in the air and intercepted. The Bears come up with it, and it's Alex Brown, the defensive end, who caught the carom. Alfonso Boone got a big hand up there. It was Boone and Daniels who collaborated on the block field goal, and there's Boone again, number 70. He never even left the ground. His <laughs> that was some vertical leap. His, both his feet were still on the ground, but Alex Brown alertly heard it hit his hands and then looked up and falling backward. Hey, don't say these defensive linemen can't come up with something. So when you look at the stats and see Alex Brown oh. with an intercepted pass, that's how you get him. And Alfonso Boone elevated all of about a minus inch off the ground. Well, that 300 <laughs> tandem. Well, who wants the ball on this Chicago offense other than the A-train? Second of 15. Oh. Olin Krutz, the center. What a series here, and now a flag goes down. Derek Gibson secured uh, the play. There is no flag for illegal touching. The ball was touched by the defender. It's third down. Yeah, the minute to flag that. Now, if that bounced off a of bear and Krutz gets it, then that's illegal touching. But it's Gibson, yes. the safety. Uh, Olin Krutz, I, I know it's instinct to catch it, but probably should have just batted it to the ground. Yeah, that would have that saved them some yardage. It would have saved them some yardage, but that's that's tough to criticize a right. guy. Instincts take over, and uh, there it is. Besides, who knows? Maybe he could have run with it. <laughs> We've seen line. Edinger will try a 50-yard field goal. His longest ever is 54. Got plenty of leg. It's good. His longest of the season. Ball Edinger gives the Bears a needed three, but it's Oakland in front, 18 to six. He proves that it's a team game, not an individual. Game. Well, well said. <laughs> On third and nine, and Gannon and Urlacher meet, and Urlacher gets the sack. His first full sack of the season had a half a sack coming in. And as hard as it is to believe. Because of this Bear defense and the fact that they have been stingy with touchdowns, the Bears are still in this game. As you see, Erlacher goes right through Charlie Garner to get to Rich Gannon, but still only being down by 12 points with almost 20 minutes of football left. Who knows? R.W. McQuarters has had one good return. Oh, a good job of fielding a low snap. And the kickoff from Leckler. McQuarters. Got by the first wave, but not the second, as Chris Hetherington and others make the stop. A 56-yard punt, only five. Uh, those are the uh, we, early results. We are on top of everything. First down, and Stewart dumps it off. 
And short yardage out of the backfield. Stanley Pritchett, Trace Armstrong, wraps him up. And just today, I can take the hits. My mom and dad did a good job of putting me together. Anthony Thomas trying to put a run together and has some room to roam. And has a first down at the 45-yard line. Few bright spots for the Bears offensively today, but Anthony Thomas certainly has been one of them. In the first quarter, he exploded. The second quarter, he got nothing. Now that we're in the third quarter, he's back getting some positive yardage. Stanley Pritchett out front gives a pretty good block. And again, this line, obviously, much better at run blocking than they are pass blocking. So anytime you could take advantage of handing the ball off to Anthony Thomas, it's a double plus for the Bears. In fact, the Bears have more penalty yards, 77, than passing yards, 59. Pritchett and a little trap inside and he picks up nine to the 46 of the Raiders and as much as the Raiders have been in command of this game should the Bears score a touchdown here late in the third I know as improbable as that seems they're right in this game nice piece of misdirection Aaron Gibson comes around the corner number 78 and absorbs a couple people see at 400 pounds you don't block people you absorb them. <laughs> It's like an eclipse. You just disappear for a while and then reemerge on the other side. Head and the Chiefs draw the lead. The one thing we know for sure about that game, the decibel meter is off the chart. We'll see those Chiefs next week in Green Bay. Story going long. Oh, what a catch! A leaping grab by Marty Booker as he fights off Terrence Shaw. When Cord Cordell Stewart lets that ball go, Shaw and Booker are beside each other. I mean, look at this coverage by Terrence Shaw. It's perfect. But Marty Booker is the one who goes up for the ball, and Shaw remains flat-footed on the ground. Look at that job by Marty Booker of saying, I'm the one who deserves this football and goes up and gets it. Boy, that was a brilliant oh. catch by Booker. And lose the yard on the fumble. The throw is complete to Booker, and he pays for it. It's a vicious hit from Anthony Dorsett. Touches as Cordell Stewart looks for the big play on third and eight. You see the Bears holding Oakland to minus two yards in that third quarter. Stewart toward the end zone. Absolutely outstanding catches in that drive. Well, he doesn't run a quick slant. He goes upfield three or four steps before he slants to the inside against Charles Woodson. And Cordell Stewart delivers a strike. And Dick, as we talked about it, as ugly as it has been, the Chicago Bears miraculously here in the fourth quarter are in this game. Edinger's point after 18-13. What a year it was. Seven yard drive in eight plays. Marty Booker is right here, but watch how he sells this out move right here before he comes back into the post against Charles Woodson. Right there, that was just enough to freeze Woodson. And then Stewart puts him, puts the ball right there. And Marty Booker appears to be fine. He runs over here. Watch how he hands this ball to a kid in the stands. But then he immediately came to the sideline what and was shot. flat on his back. How great is oh, that really is that, super? You can put that, uh, frame that one, that last picture, those two young boys. But Marty Booker is hurt. There's some. Empty again. And Teo Johnson sent way out to the left. Complete. Brian Robinson, the 305-pound defensive tackle from Fresno State, makes the play. Well, there's no pressure like pressure up the middle and completely turned loose by the right side of the Raiders' offensive line was Robinson. That's, if you want to see Rich Gannon boil over, just keep locking like that. That'll do it. 
Well, the Bears, with their effort here in the second half, they've got their fans on their feet. Third and ten. Flushed out, and he throws it away. No flag. Well, he was outside the pocket. So Rich Gannon's smart to dump the football. He knew he wasn't going to give up the yardage. Alex Brown with the pressure. It's a rollout all the watch Gannon. He just makes a quick fake. But Alex Brown had contain on that play after they ran a line stunt. And he showed a good burst getting up. Thanks, Jim. Boy, there's some good games going on today. There sure are. And this one may not be the prettiest game, but it's still competitive. Score. Somehow gets out of that, and that takes a tremendous hit. Fights his way out to the 18 as Charles Woodson came up from the left corner to greet him. Rod Coleman was shagging him from the backside. Well, initially, you know, a little fake toss, but Cordell wanting to throw the quick slant to Stanley Pritchett couldn't find it, but look at this hit. <laughs> I think Rod Woodson in a little bit of disbelief that Cordell Stewart didn't go down. Instead of a tackle, he went for the hit. You know, Woodson, instead of wrapping up, went for the big, you know, the highlight hit. And Cordell Stewart said, well, you better bring more than that because that's not enough. Woodson 200 and Stewart about 220. Up the middle. Anthony Thomas caught from behind, however, short of the first down by Trace Armstrong. It'll be third and three here. First, back to New York and Jim Nance. Was he any good? Joe Montana. Oh, was that who that was? That's old Joe. I wonder, guy was trying to help you. <laughs> and there's a deflection and an interception. McQuarters with blockers. 30, 40, 50 to the 45. And the Bears fans sense that they might win this game. slant pattern to his tight end Doug Jolly the ball was high I don't know if it went through the hands of Jolly or just hit them and popped them up in the air in fact he hit him right on the hands but Doug Jolly almost looked like a volleyball game instead of bumping it over the net he bumps it up into the air right to RW and the Bears who needed a break badly Dick got it 43 yards on the return his seventh career pick now can Chicago make full measure of this uh, turnover, the second interception from Gannon. Cordell play action. Nobody open deep. Lots of room over here. And finally out of bounds inside the 30. Good bit of acting by Cordell to throw off two Raider defenders. And Travian Smith was the last Raider defender, and he was a little nonchalant as far as whether or not Stewart was going out of bounds. The quick pump right there, that freezes everybody. And, and, and right there, you know, the, the Cordell Stewart almost stayed in bounds. That almost was a Chicago touchdown. 16 yards on the scramble, 45 yards rushing for Cordell who has rushed for over 2,500 yards with the Steelers. And I think there are a lot of people in California right now that are in disbelief. Now it's Thomas getting outside. 15, 10, and inside the 10. Oh, my! They've been able to seal the edges, the Bears, in this game, and Thomas able to turn the corner again. Everybody knew the A train had to play a big part if the Bears were even to be in this ball game. And look how this offense is moving without Marty Booker. Second straight game that Thomas has rushed for over 100. He now has carried 18 times for 115. It's first and goal at the nine. Now, no penalties if you're the Bears. Every time they've been down here, they've self destructed. Thomas hit the backfield and stopped after a yard gain as Napoleon Harris with a good surge defensively and Travian Smith there to assist.
The give is to Pritchett. Touchdown! The Bears are in the lead. Stanley Pritchett's first touchdown of the season. Stanley mostly a blocker. And the receiver doesn't get a lot of carries, but a good misdirection and a good trap and kick out. And the Bears are going to go for two as well they should. Who Stanley kind of bites the dust in the end zone. That was a that was a keister landing. But up by one point, going ahead 20 to 18 doesn't do you a lot of good. So you got to go for two and try to get up where a field goal will tie you, not beat you. This is the first time the Bears under Cordell Stewart have tried the two point conversion and having Dick a quarterback who can run like Cordell a real advantage here. They spread it out and now they bring it in tight with triple low to the right. Stewart runs it. Percentage play when Cordell Stewart from two yards out is going to run the football. And Bill Callahan got to talk to his offense and Rich Gannon. Now let's be realistic. They've been there before. Rice, Brown, Gannon, Garner. They've been behind. They've made a few comebacks. But who would have thunk it that the Bears are in the lead? They led at halftime 18 to 3 and now 18 unanswered second half points as Pritchett and that trap goes eight yards for the score and then with three men set out to the right side Cordell followed a wave of blue jerseys for the two point conversion. That was a nice piece of ball handling there by Cordell as he handed it to Pritchett. Nothing fancy here. Student body right and Cordell kind of nonchalantly just steps into the end zone. Without Marty Booker, their receiving star, the Bears still able to put together an outstanding drive and stuff it in the end zone. Cut, 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 cut. Stewart on the option play. He keeps it to the 20, 35 yard line. A couple of yards shy of a first down. They use that a couple occasions Monday night against the Green Bay Packers. Cordell Stewart, such an accomplished runner at the quarterback position, you can do this, but it is not really one of the keys to longevity in the National Football League, running the option as a quarterback. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a great way to find your way to the training room. Bears don't have to run a play. For this team, some fight. And a big play here at third and two with two minutes to go. And Stewart, the throw, gets the first down. As he throws outside, Woodson and Smith make the tackle. Now speed it up, Chicago. Justin Dustin Lyman makes the catch. Well, Chicago being pretty leisurely here, and they're, they're going back into the huddle and letting the clock run. Looks like they're giving me the impression now that they're thinking overtime's not all that bad. Or if you're going to score, don't leave the Raiders with any time to come back. Ball at the 40-yard line, first down. Thomas gets five, almost six yards before Derek Gibson can come up from a safety slot to make the tackle. Reminder coming up on the Subway postgame show. Woodson on a corner blitz. The pass complete to Des White. Does he have enough for a first down? Let's see where they mark it. Final minute here at Soldier Field in Chicago. 21 seconds to go. Stewart. Scrambles. Got to get to the 50. 40. 35. And out of bounds with 15 seconds at the 32. But hold on. There's a, a flag. flag down back at the 45 in Bears territory. And this has haunted the Bears if it's against them all day. Another. This will take them about 100 yards in penalties. 11 flag of the day. Now what do you do with 15 seconds? How big do you gamble? They're showing corner blitz, and here comes Woodson, picked up by Pritchett. Open, however, is Des White, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 32-yard line. 
So right now they're a 50 yard line field goal attempt away. They're well within Edinger's range. How about this throw by Cordell Stewart? And how about this coverage by the Raiders secondary as they completely lose track of Des White? Oh, at this point in the game, how do you lose track of a guy by that margin? So nine seconds stand to go. So they have a timeout. They'll run one play and then get in this man, Paul Edinger. An unusual style when he turns his back completely to the goal line. It is good! Chicago in the second half down 18 to 3 at the intermission and Edinger with a 50 and 48 yard field goal seals the victory and what a brutally difficult return homecoming return for Bill Callahan the coach the Chicago native this is a bitter bitter loss for the Oakland Raiders again 0 and 3 on the road and so the Chicago Bears on the final play of the game defeat the Oakland Raiders 24-21. The Raiders now 2-3 and three and the Bears 1-3. 24-21. Dick Enberg, Dan Deer.